Hey guys, what's going on? It's Doconic here, and welcome back for another Top 5 Tuesday, and today we're going to be going over what I consider to be the top 5 best non-Doken exclusive strength support units that you can run on a mono strength team. Now that being said guys, let's go ahead and go over some of the rules. As always, no Doken exclusives will be considered, no LRs will be considered. Anything else is fair game. Anything from Baba Shops, Summonings, World Tournaments, events that came out only once, and anything that was gifted to us by Bandai will be taken into consideration. Because of the uniqueness of the strength teams, we will also be taking into consideration Link skills. Before I give the rankings, I will also be reviewing the cards. So, the order that I review the card does not necessarily mean that is the order that I'm going to rank them in. So without further ado, let's go over the cards and review their passives and Link skills. First card up is a Meaningful Strike Super Saiyan 2 Trunks Teen. His passive skill is Rusing Courage. Strength type, attack and defense plus 25%. His link skills are Golden Warrior, Saiyan Lineage, Super Saiyan, Royal Lineage, Saiyan Warrior Race, and Prepared for Battle. And he's a standard unit to be pulled on a banner. The next one is going to be Key Focus Master Roshi Max Power. His passive skill is Master Roshi's Prestige, High Chance of Attack plus 20% and Key plus 2 for Strength Types. His link skills are Over in a Flash, In Fighter, Kamehameha, Supreme Warrior, World Tournament Champion, and Turtle School. He's available in the Baba Shop on the global side for 30,000 Baba points. The next one is The Last Instant Transmission Super Saiyan Goku. His passive skill is The Final Decision, key plus 2 for all allies when HP is 50% or above. And his link skills are Golden Warrior, Saiyan Warrior Ace, Super Saiyan, Kamehameha, all in the fan. He was available on the One Piece crossover campaign. The next one is Eradicator of Hope, Majin Buu, Ultimate Gohan Absorb. His passive skill is Focus Strength, Strength Type Attack plus 25%, and his link skills are Metamorphosis, Kamehameha, Big Bad Bosses, Majin, The Wall Standing Tall. He's available to grind from the first stage, level 1, Majin Transformation, from the terrifying Transforming Majin event, which is the Buhan event. And last but not least, we have Curiosity and Adventure, Bulma Youth. Her passive skill, Knowledge of Firearms, Strength Type Key plus 3, and her link skills are Money Money Money, Rival Duo, Brainiacs, The Incredible Adventure, Guidance of the Dragon Balls, and Scientist. And that Balma was also an 8th World Tournament Mission Prize Reward, and she's also available to summon on the Dragon Ball Saga Summon tickets within the World Tournament. Now before we go on, let's go ahead and discuss some of the honorable mentions. The first one is Dual Personality Launch. Her passive skill is Billowing Smoke, key plus 2 for all allies when HP is 50% or above. Her link skills are Guidance of the Dragon Balls, The Incredible Adventure, and Flea. Next one is Beloved Girl Fighter, Android number 18. Her passive skill is Attention to the Strongest, all allies key plus 2 when HP is 50% or above. And her link skills are Android Assault, Twin Terrors, The Innocence, Battlefield Diva, Infinite Energy. Now. The next one is going to be a little bit controversial because it technically is a support unit with the assumption that the Super Saiyan 4s are going to be coming in this week. His card will be getting a Doken Awakening and he's going to be a primary unit that you're going to run alongside the Super Saiyan 4 Goku due to the fact that all of his Link skills hit off all of the Super Saiyan 4 Goku's Link skills. If you don't know who I'm talking about, that is the Ultimate Aspiration Super Saiyan 3 Goku GT. His passive skill is Seasoned Courage, attack plus 25% for all allies, and his link skills are Golden Warrior, Super Saiyan, Kamehameha, Limit Breaking Form, Over in a Flash, and GT. Now he is a rare summon, but he should, assuming we get the Super Saiyan 4s this weekend, he should be available for Doken Awakening to the Ultimate Adolescent Super Saiyan 3 Goku GT, Golden Giant 8. Now he, Doken Awakens, with a passive skill 8, Awakening. Attack plus 33% for all allies and a rare chance to turn into a golden ape. And his link skills are Super Saiyan Kamehameha, Limit Breaking Form, Over in a Flash, GT, Saiyan Roar, and Fierce Battle. Now the reason I didn't put him there again, as I stated before, he is the linking buddy to Super Saiyan 4 Goku and he should have his Doken Awakening this weekend. With that being said, even though he technically has a good passive skill as a support unit, if you're running a Super Saiyan 4 Goku, chances are you are not going to want to have him rotating off every other round. You're going to want to stick him with the Super Saiyan 4 Goku, that way you can hit off all of those key links. Now some of you may be thinking, well Dokonic, wait a second, if you're considering the Super Saiyan 3 Goku uh, as not a top unit because he's going to be a primary pick, then why are you considering the Super Saiyan 2 Trunks? I mean, 
he's a really good unit. He has a good passive skill, a good super attack, and he has amazing link skills. And after three super attacks, he's going to be hitting really hard. Well, that could be true. Um, if you're new to this channel, you don't know. Um, I'm not a big fan of that greatly or raising attack for a certain amount of turns. Uh, yes, it's viable, but it just takes too long for it to take effect. The thing is, there are a whole bunch of different units. Uh, assuming, let's say you're running uh, an Omega Shenron team. Mega Shenron team, you're going to want to run a Mega Shenron, and you're going to want to run another villain, let's say uh, Perfect Form Cell, because they'll link decent together. And then on the opposite rotation, you would probably want to run a Gogeta with a Super Saiyan 4 Goku, assuming you have him at that point in the game, or a Gogeta and a Super Saiyan God Goku. There are a lot of other better units you could have, even the Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, the teen one that got his Doken Awakening. There are a lot of better units you could actually run. On, uh, on the Super Saiyan Broly team, you're definitely going to want to keep everything to be on Super Saiyan. So you're going to have the Super Saiyan, uh, to, uh, the Super Saiyan Broly, then you're going to have the Gogeta. Uh, you're also going to have the Super Saiyan 2 Gohan on that team, and the Super Saiyan God Goku on that team. In my opinion, anyway, that's what I, who I would run. You might throw on some, some Super Saiyan 3s in there. The Super Saiyan 3 Goku is pretty hard-hitting. Omega Shenron still a pretty decent unit to throw on there if you don't have anyone else. But uh, personally, he would be my rotational, in my opinion. And then if you're going to go all the way over to the Super Saiyan 4s, assuming you're going to run a mono hero team, I mean, you're going to have the Super Saiyan 4 Goku, the Super Saiyan 3 Goku. Those two are always going to be linked together at all times. And on the opposite end, I would probably have Gogeta and the Super Saiyan 2 go on. Immense damage multipliers, they hit each other's links off really well. And on rotation, I would probably have at least at that um, Super Saiyan God Goku, even though he's not a great support unit per se for his passive skills. For his link skills, that would be good. Um, or I would actually take out that Super Saiyan 2 Gohan and put that Super Saiyan God Goku in his spot. Keep him on so that way that Gogeta is always getting his link skills off. And then you would have the other any of these cards out on rotation. That's just my opinion on it, guys. I personally don't see having this Super Saiyan 2 Trunks as a viable option as a primary unit. Yes, if you don't have any other units, then yeah, he's a really good viable primary unit. But I would keep him on rotation. That's just my opinion on the matter. But with that being said, without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about the rankings. In fifth place is Key Focus Master Roshi Max Power. Now, the reason is because, um, as standard for the Baba Shop exclusives, he only has a chance to increase the attack and the key of all the units. While it does both attack and key, because it's uh, RNG based, I do not like to take that consideration. But he made this list because typically I don't like the Baba Shops to make the list because of that. He does have the over and a flash link, which is super viable. A lot of the strength characters, especially on the hero side, have over and a flash. The Super Saiyan 3s have it, and you have a lot of Super Saiyan 3s. You have the GT Vegeta, all this off the top of my head. The GT Vegeta, the regular Vegeta, the Super Saiyan Goku, the GT Goku. Those four right there, and Gogeta. So that's five cards right off the top of my head that all have the over and a flash link skill. So that makes them that much more viable. But unfortunately, because we're primarily, primarily taking into consideration just the passive skill, he did come in fifth place. But by no means is he bad. He's also technically free to play, so you can grab him if you don't have any of the rest of these. The next one is probably going to be a little bit up for debate for some of you. It is the last instant transmission Super Saiyan Goku. He is in my fourth place spot. Now, as mentioned earlier, he was available during the crossover campaign for One Piece. Now, that only came around once, and it's probably only going to have come around that one time. It'll probably will never be available again in the future. It hasn't been since it's come out, and it came out a long time ago. But I'm going to take it into consideration because there are OG players here who have this. Now, in my in my honorable mention section, I did have mentioned I did mention a couple of the other cards that have the passive skills. It's the same passive skill as his. Place him with those two. But his passive skill, the final decision, key plus two for all allies when HP is 50% or above. The reason why I picked him over them is because of his link skills: Golden Warrior, Saiyan Warrior, Race, and Super Saiyan, and Kamehameha. Now, all those are really viable on a, on a strength team because most of the people you're going to be running are going to be Super Saiyan heroes. But that's just my opinion on the matter. It is also restrictive. That's why he didn't come in a higher place. It was kind of up to debate between the two of them. It's just that those link skills had to be taken into consideration over Master Roshi's. Master Roshi's, I mean, he had over in a flash and Kamehameha, but outside of that, those are the only two. And Kamehameha is a flat-out boost. So that is why Last Instant Transmission Super Saiyan Goku came over Master Roshi. The next one is Eradicator of Hope Majin Buu Ultimate Goma. Passive skill is Focus Strength. Strength type attack plus 25%. And his link skills, Metamorphosis, Kamehameha, Big Bad Bosses, Majin, and the Wall Set and Toll. Now, again, we're taking this consideration on the global side, 
attack is a flat out four strength. It's a straight attack plus 25% for all strength units. There's no restriction there. Um, I do like him over the that Goku, and the, the biggest reason why I pit put him over that Goku is specifically because he that Goku has only been available once if you don't have him. This Majin Buu is available for grinding. You can get him now at this point in the game because the Dokken exclusives are available every single day of the week. The events are anyway. He's available to grind from that Buu Hunter. So he's always going to be available for you guys at least once a week. So I took that into consideration a little bit on this one as well, just to give him a little nudge over that Goku. Um, but the other thing is on, a, uh, there are cards he does link with. I mean, you do have another Boo, that, uh, the, the Boo Tanks card that was available. So those two do link together. And there's also the Fat Boo. So you could run a pretty decent extreme team with either a Broly lead or an Omega Shenron lead. Um, he has the Link Skills Metamorphosis, Kamehameha, and Big Bad Bosses. Specifically, Big Bad Bosses is really good. And Metamorphosis is available on certain cards that are either out now or will be in the future. Uh, but again, he's a de decent card to have. He's free to play, so I put him there. The next one is going to be the Meaningful Strike Super Saiyan 2 Trunks team. Now, his passive skill, again, Ruse Courage, Strength Type Attack and Defense plus 25%. And his link skills are Golden Warrior, Saiyan Lineage, Super Saiyan, Royal Lineage, Super Saiyan... Um, same warrior race and prepared for battle. Now, he is amazing for links and, and really, really good for his passive skill. Problem is, he doesn't give key to the first card, the actual slot in the rotation. So I had to, I had to put him just underneath this next card. Um, I really like his passive skill of buffing all strength types, and his link skills do put him at a higher advantage than most of these other cards because him and the card that is next to him is definitely going to be getting off a super attack. I mean, just with um, prepared for battle alone on a, on a heroes team or with heroes in the actual strength units, he's going to be getting two key, and then golden warriors, most of them also. So that's three key right there. Um, and then he gets the super saiyan saiyan warrior race um, buffs for attack, and some of them may have the same lineage, not so much, and the royal lineage if you're running Vegeta. But he is a pretty good viable unit, and he's giving everyone attack and defense buff. That attack and defense is noticeable on a 70% lead. Uh, when the Super Saiyan 4s come around, it'll definitely be a lot more noticeable. It's really, really official. Especially if he's on with a Goku. After that Super Saiyan 4, Goku got his defense stat buffed up. Now, as you probably all have guessed, the number one card, in my opinion, is Curiosity and Adventure, Bulma. Yes, I know, the one who has almost no link skills to anyone has the top spot. Now, why? Why would I do this? Well, her passive skill, I mean, honestly, just super useful for a mono strength team. I mean, everyone was running her, I ran her, when the when the World Tournament came around, when you want to have Broly giving key. Passive skill, knowledge of firearms, strength type key plus three, straight up, that's all that there is to it. Her passive skill gives all strength types key, there's no restriction, there's no nothing. Yeah, she has no links, yeah, she doesn't hit hard. We're not talking about hard hitting units, if you want a hard hitting unit and you're going to throw that trunks on there, outside of that, this Balma is super viable. I mean, a key plus three, assuming you're running a double key three lead, when she's on the field, you only need three more key. And assuming you have the, the link skills going off, chances are you're already launching super attacks and you need to worry about the key. That way you could set up the field the way you want it. But hey guys, that's my opinion. She's also a free-to-play unit, um, so that also gave her a little bit of edge over all the other guys, all, except for the, the boobies, he's also technically free to play. But uh, that's why she got the first place slot. That's it, guys. That's what I believe. That's my opinion on the matter. Thank you for joining me here today. Let me know your opinion down below. Do you think I made the correct choices? Hit that sub button if you're new here, and I'll catch you in next week's video.